The biggest risk in property and casualty, is that now climate change or climate uh, kind of uh, uh, things that are changing the, the way that the Earth uh, deals with weather and things like that? Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, when you look at natural catastrophes, um, the number of events has significantly increased, uh, and not only the very big events like hurricanes, but also what we call secondary perils, so wildfires, um, uh, floodings, um, and drought. And this leads to the fact that you have far more events and therefore a much higher cost uh, of all of the natural catastrophes. So how do you really assess the risk of climate change? Because how can you possibly know whether there's going to be a hurricane or a flood? Uh, it's just based on the past or the projection of the future, or what, how do you do that? So essentially we use data from the past, but as you say, since the dynamic has changed, uh, we need to also look forward. And what we do a lot, we work a lot with scientists uh, who understand what uh, the warming of the earth and climate change will mean for uh, the question of taking risk. And secondly, we take much less risk than we used to take because we have to be careful. So let's suppose there are a lot of hurricanes. Is that good for property and casualty insurers or not? Good because people say, well, there's going to be more hurricanes, I should buy more insurance, or not good because you got to pay a lot of claims? It depends. Uh, I would say it's good because um, it creates, I mean, A, it creates the awareness to do more prevention. What we see today is that, um, as I said earlier, there is more events, um, it becomes more and more difficult to insure, and therefore um, we work a lot with our customers around preventions. And so if you look uh, at the large hurricanes, um, Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Irma, for example, they're about 15 years apart, um, costs have actually come down over time despite inflation. So Prevention does work.